Alrighty guys, today I am showing you how to make my little Tanjiro earrings. These are based on the earrings that the character Tanjiro wears in Demon Slayer. It's not very original. I think they have an actual name, I just don't know what it is. I am using size 11 OC beads. I originally, in my first pair, used this turquoise for this bit at the bottom here. But the character technically wears more of a like very gray blue so i bought this bead color instead and i think it's gonna work really well uh we are going to use square stitch which i don't do very often so i will probably make a lot of mistakes but i thought i'd show you guys along the way so let's get started for my colors today i am using black white red and this very very pale gray blue I'm also using a size 11 needle and wildfire thread and a 0.15 millimeter or 0 0.006 inches. I'm sure that there is an actual like weight for this, but I don't know what it is. So I just go with a 0.15 millimeter. So I actually kind of already got started. I have my first row. Oh, this might be difficult for you guys to see. I'll try and zoom in a little bit and keep it focused. But I have 13 stitches. Stitches. I have 13 beads here. I'm normally a knitter, so I call bead stitches all the time. I'm very sorry. But you have 13 beads here, and you're going to just weave into them one at a time. So we our pattern starts with nope, two rows of black. If I could get it to focus, sorry two rows of black and then one, two, three, four rows or five rows of black and blue and then black and white up to the red. So let's get started. Let me get focused again. Let's get started. I have a stopper bead to make sure that my beads don't fall off. It's not actually important. I'm just not very good at managing myself. So what I'm gonna do is take this first bead and I'm actually going to go the way the thread is going away from myself. And the first row, as with anything, always the hardest. Setup is always the most difficult part of anything. Well, we want this to actually next to things. Oh, what has happened here? All right, wonderful. And I like to flip my work because my mantra is towards me than away from me. And it just makes it a lot easier to see what I'm doing and to keep everything very kind of universal. So now I'm going to go through that bead and away from me. I will say it about 500 more times. So if you didn't catch it that time, don't worry. Pick up another black bead. And then again, we're gonna use the mantra towards ourselves. And this first bead will just be wonky. Like that's just the natural state. Honestly, that's kind of the natural state of beads. So this is our first bead. We're going into this second bead right here towards ourselves. See how the needle is coming towards me? Towards ourselves. And then we secure it by beading it away from ourselves. Goodness, that would stop being so twisted. Away from ourselves. And this gets so much easier as you get further down, not just in this row, but in future rows, especially. Sorry, I'm trying to keep everything relatively together. But you can see our row, our second row is starting to really shape up there. Hopefully y'all can see. Our second row is starting to really shape up there. Let's pick up another bead. We're gonna go, if I could keep it on camera. Oh, one up, one down actually. We're gonna go down towards ourselves. Towards ourselves. Pull the thread through into the stitch or into the bead below again with the stitch, then back through 
that new bead headed away from ourselves. So you're basically creating a little like ladder between your beads. You're basically making little thread bridges, but instead of doing it the way you would do it, my baseline is for um, brick stitch. So you pick everything up and it br kind of bricks up on top of each other as opposed to being straight across like in square stitch towards us. And then back through the new bead away from us. And hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. Into the row before. Go through this bead heading towards you. Oh, or you could just fully pull it away. That's cool too. Alrighty. And then away from you to secure it. I like to pull on things to make sure they're nice and secure. You will probably see your thread so you can pick something dark if your whole design is dark, but the large majority of our design is actually very light. So it didn't seem like a good choice. So I just kept it with lighter beads and lighter thread. Alrighty, and then I'm just gonna continue this all the way down the row. Okay, and that is our setup done. Looks pretty good. Again, you will be able to see the white thread through everything. That is kind of annoying. If I, again, if I was using all black, I would use just an all black thread and use all black everything. And when it comes to thread, I normally bead with nylon thread. I normally bead with uh, this Nymo size B. I have a ton of it, as you can see. That's what I normally would bead with, but it's so thin and it's got such excellent movement. So for a stiff, something I wanna hang a lot stiffer, that's when I use the wildfire because it's heat bonded as opposed to the Nymo is just like a bunch of threads that are kind of lightly bonded together. So that is uh, our extremely unexciting setup round. Let's move on to some color. So our first row, as you can see, is black, blue all the way across. Oh, that's not, there we go. Black, blue all the way across, black. So we've got black, 11, blue, black. So I'll repeat that again. That's gonna be black. Again, we're gonna go the way of our thread here. Your setup is always the way of your thread. So, and then back the other way. And that's when I like to switch the way I'm holding my work, just so I can keep using that mantra of towards me and away from me. Towards me, away from me, towards, from, towards me, away from me. Also, another super fun thing about these colors, I don't know if you can tell, but they're cut in a way that's called Charlotte Cut. And they actually pick up a little bit of like shine when you wear them. So these are just regular like round black beads. They don't have anything special about them. They don't have any shine to them really. But a Charlotte Cut bead has a little bit of extra shine, which I find very fun. Okay, towards me. Oh, trying not to grab my tail. 
I don't always succeed. And then, away from me. Ugh, like I said, there will be knots. from the row before that it will sit next to towards you pull through Ooh, maybe pull through pull through and then back through the bead you just added going away from you you in the bead before away from you in the new bead towards you on the bead from the row before away from you in the new bead Again, trying not to get your tail a million times. And then you carry on doing this to the very end of the row. All right, and that was our first row of the blue done. You're actually going to repeat this row another three times, and then you'll decrease the amount of blue that you use in the next one. So I'll meet you back up here once I'm done with the next three rows of the blue and black. Alrighty, I have completed all of the blue and black all the way across and now we're on to this row right here, which is the final row of blue. It's three, seven, three, three black, seven blue, three black. So we're going to complete that row. I'm actually going to get myself seven beads, two, four, six, seven, and that is us done with this color. Alrighty, and our next row is this row right above it. Two black, one white, seven black, one white, two black. The interesting thing about seed beads is that even though they are technically the same size, that does not mean they are always the same shape. So you do have to be very aware of the shape that you're working with. Because as you can see, some of them are just bigger than each other. All right, and that is our row of two, two black, one white, seven black, one white, two black, done. Our next row is going to be one black, one white, one black, two white, three black, two white, one black, one white, one black. And this is the fun part of square stitch because now you're starting to really see the pattern kind of come together and become something. 
previously you've been just kind of trusting the process, but now you can really see it coming through. And can you see how much faster this is now that our like first few rows are done? And we're in the, we're in the throes of it. All right. We're getting there. It is a little bit bigger than the original, which I find actually very interesting. I'm wondering if these turquoise beads were slightly smaller than the blue I'm using now. It was the same black and white, I know that for sure, but yeah. And then we'll just continue all the way up and I'm actually gonna meet you guys again at the red. Alrighty, so originally I had been planning on using the same red that I used in this one, which as you can see is extremely bright. But then I went and looked at photos of the actual um, earring themselves in the anime. And so it has this like grayish blue, but it's also got a much, much darker red for the sun. So I decided to go for this more brown red and we're gonna see how that goes. But basically our first row here is going to be this one right here, which is three black, white, black, three red, black, white, three black. And then we're just gonna do the same pattern you see here all the way up, but with the new red. Alrighty, and that is it for the patterned portion of the earring. Hopefully you guys can see, let me see if I can get that a little bit closer. Hopefully you guys can see it starting to really come together. And then you just have two more rows of black to mirror what you have on the bottom, on the top. And then I'll come back and we'll do the adding of the wire guard together. Alrighty, so we're all the way at the top now and we just need to add our wire guard. Sorry, my light's over here, so I'm getting in my own way, but this is our wire guard. All it does is give you a channel with which to put your thread through to secure this to the earring. This is actually my least favorite part. I've never done this on camera, so we'll see if I have any luck, but you kind of have to weave through some of your beads. And I'm gonna try to put it between the sixth and eighth bead, so we're already at the second, third, fourth, fifth. Let's see, is that how I did it on the last one? How did I do it on the last one? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Three, four, five. Going to attempt to emulate so we're gonna have it because it's so wide we want it to go through the first five ten and then we'll leave kind of those middle three in the middle so using a wire guard all you want to do 
is take your needle up one channel and literally just down the other other side of the channel. It's very hard to do, I'm trying to do it through a camera. Oh, sorry, I bumped the tripod. And then I sort of put it on. And we're gonna pull our needle all the way out the other side. And there we go. See how it sits there? You can actually add your earring hook before, but I don't know what kind of earring hook I wanna add yet, so I'm just gonna do it like this. And then I'm gonna go back through and secure it a couple of times because I don't want it just once. Ooh, this is very hard to do on camera and make sure that everything can be seen. Try not to catch your tail like I seem to always do. The other three. And then we're gonna go back up the channel. I just like to have a go through at least two times because that feels a lot more secure than just one thread there. Sorry, my voice is all over the place. I'm also like leaning over my phone. Alrighty. Back down. And this time I'm gonna weave it down. Oop, nope. See, you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that your thread is in the channel. See how that one's not really in the channel? So, there we go, it's in the channel now. And I'm going to try and weave back through You're just creating tension to make sure that whenever you snip your thread, you don't lose anything. You're not gonna unravel and mess up all of your hard work. And then now I'll make a little like loop-de-loop -loop basically these two, and then again out through these two, maybe. Pull tight, and we're done. That's your earring completed. You just have to weave in this end at the bottom the exact same way, up and through, and then you're done with your earrings. Alrighty, and there you go. You've made your Tanjiro earring. Everything is woven in. We have our wire guard here at the top. This is our original, and this is our updated version. Beautiful. Hope you had fun.